Hello everyone, we're here today in DaVinci Resolve 18 studio version. We're going to do a quad reveal with a picture. It's going to expand from the center out to the four quad corners when it's animated. Uh, we got to start out, well before that we do that, let me tell you a little about me. I have to use this on-screen keyboard. Uh, due to health reasons, so it will be in the way a little bit, but I'll do my, my best to keep it out of the way. I'm going to start out with a fusion composition. If you don't have your effects open, that's up here. Then go under effects, and you'll see the fusion composition right there. Just drag it over on a timeline. Make sure your playhead is over it. And go down to Fusion. Drag your media in. Grab a transform node. Connect the media to the yellow of the transform. Select the transform. Now I have this, um, it, Defensive Resolve uses the coordinates for each corner of their, um, you know, this is 19 by 20 by 1080, as you see up in the top right. We're going to use these values as we go. Um, so, top left is 0.25 by 0.75. The right is 0.75 by 0.75. Bottom left is 0.25 by 0.25. Bottom right is 0.75 by 0.25. Um, I've only done this once or twice, so I don't really remember all the time. Yeah, you'll see it gets a little confusing. But you might want to take note of this. Maybe draw it out on a piece of paper, have it alongside you. I have to do it on here because I have no use of my hands. So I'll be pulling it up here often throughout this tutorial. So we're going to start with the 0.25 by 0.75, top left. So with the transform node selected, go up in the inspector under pivot. The X value put 0.25 and the Y 0.75. This effect also works on videos, not just stills. So you can add it to the beginning of a video as well. Drag your uh, transform into the uh, viewer. Make sure you're on one viewer mode. And right off the bat, you'll see a circle with a little X in it on the top left quadrant of this picture that you want to have. Then grab a background node. Bring it in under the transform. Drag the alpha all the way down. Tie the transform into the background. It'll make a merge. Um, unclick. Or it's just a click to the side so the uh, merge is not selected.
Okay, now we'll bring in two rectangles. Make our mask. And a Mac control. With the Mac control selected, go open the inspector under combine. Go to combine alpha. And then combine op. Go to minimum. Take your number two rectangle, tie it into the yellow of the mat control. And number one rectangle goes into the green on the mat control. Now drag your mat control into the viewfinder. Select your rectangle number one, and we want to go over to the center value in the inspector and put them same values in, 0.25 in the X and 0.75 in the Y. And you'll see the box moved up in the top left corner of the, the uh, viewer. Coming out of your mat control, tie it into the blue mask of the Merge 1. While I'm thinking about it, make sure your playhead is at frame zero. Under transform, select that node. Well, we'll, we'll wait a minute on that. Let's start to animate this first. That way I can show you what it does. So select rectangle number two. We actually want to start on the bottom right coordinates. Which is 0 0.75 by 0 0.25. In the center value, put in the X value 0.75 and Y value 0.25. Now you'll see the green box move to the bottom right corner. So at this moment, all is well. Okay, put your playhead at frame zero and keyframe the center value. Keyframe that center value. Move the playhead to frame 20.
then we'll put this value back in, which is just the opposite. 25 by 75. Okay, move your playhead back and forth, and you should get full movement all the way up to the end of the mask. At frame 20. Now go back to your transform. This is why I wanted to wait on adjusting the size. Go up to the inspector under the size value. Put 1.5. And then put your playhead at frame 0. Keyframe that size value. Go to frame 20, and that little dot right above my yellow highlighter, you want to click that, which will set it back to zero. Or well, I should say 1.0. Now when you move it, you'll see the picture actually stretches as it opens up. Okay, now we have to make three more of these. Um, there's, there's a set of four we're going to have all together. So highlight everything I just did. Save it, whether you use your shortcuts on the keyboard or the way I do it is right click it and go up and hit copy then paste. Set them up something like that, and then tie your media into the transform. If you like what I do, would you think of subscribing? Give me a like and hit the bell so you get notifications for my upcoming tutorials. This tutorial was inspired by Simon Stansfeld. He uh, has a YouTube channel, many tutorials on there. He's very advanced. You can learn a lot from him. If you don't know him, you might want to look him up. Connect your Merge 1 into your Merge 1 slash 1 below it. Forgot I had the uh, playhead down at zero. So drag in your merge two into the viewer. If you're not seeing anything, it's because your playhead's down at zero. Okay. Now we're going to go with the top right coordinates first. We're going to set the transform to that. So select the transform. That's 0.75 by 0.75. So under the pivot,
Okay, then we got to do the top rectangle. Of this quadrant. In the center value, we want to change the X value to 0.75. Now you'll see the green box move to the top right. Then hit your triangle number two of the second quadrant. And we're going to animate it. Now we want to start that down here in the bottom left. And it's going to move back up to the right. So we're going to do the animation now. And the bottom left is 20, 0.25 by 0.25. Yeah, take your play it all the way to zero when you do it. Then go up to frame 20, and we want this value, 0 0.75, 0 0.75. Okay, with that at 0 0.75, 0 0.75. Move your playhead back and forth from 0 to 20. As you see, both sides are moving at the same time, same sizes. We don't want that. We want the right side to move 5 frames after the left side. So it's going to be like 2 thirds of the size of the left one until it gets fully open. So, put your playhead at frame 5. If you leave your rectangle 2 selected, you can see the keyframes that are already there. Up at the top right, you'll see where it says keyframes. Select that. And if you have all this in the way, blocking it, go all the way to the right and click that little box. And that'll open it up. And you want to go over here on the right side and select that little box so they they all show up. As far as I know, on Resolve 17, it doesn't stack all of these up at one time like it does here. It's from what I can tell so it's a little easier to uh, reset these keyframes you have to be very careful to only adjust the ones that we're doing at each time uh, so if you point at it we'll start with the top one that's rectangle two slash one so we'll look here to the right and look for that one you find it then hit that little arrow and it'll open right here then select the transform and it says transform one slash one that's this one and 
Now, like say, if you have Resolve 17, you can just highlight the whole thing. I did that once and it didn't work. It screwed me up, so I just do two at a time. But make sure you connect the two. You highlight it from one to the other. That way they both move at the same time. And move it over to where the first keyframe lines up with the playhead at five frames. Same thing down here. Now if you look up here, you'll see the keyframes have moved. Before you close the keyframe editor, click on these little arrows to close these up so we don't make a mistake and hit the wrong one next time. See now when you move it across your playhead, you see they're staggered. One's half to two-thirds the size is the other one. That's what we want. Okay. Now save all these nodes again. The ones that I am. Make sure you don't um, include that merge too. Copy it. Paste it below the other one. Bring your media into your transform. Okay, now we're going to start with the next one in the bottom right, which is coordinates 0 0.75 by 0.25. So start with the transform. Go up to the pivot. X value 0.75, Y value 0.25. Could double check that. Okay, now go to your top triangle, or rectangle, I'm sorry, and change the center value to the same, x value at 0.75, y at 0.25. Now you'll see your little green box is down in the bottom right. Now select rectangle number two, the bottom one, and we want it to start up here in the top left and work down to here. So 
So put your playhead at five. And as long as you have that rectangle selected, you'll see the keyframes. Point two five, point seven five, top left is what we're where we're going for now. And his center value x point two five, y point seven five. And you'll see the box up in the top left corner now. Move the playhead to the second keyframe, which is uh, frame 25 now. It was 20. We moved everything down 5. Now we want to Go back to this one. Which is 0 0.75 by 0 0.25. So in the X value, put 0 0.75 and the Y 0.25. Okay, pipe from merge two down to the bottom merge. And connect it, then drag the merge three up into the viewer. And now you'll have it there. But as we move it, you're going to see the two right ones will stay the same size as the top ones did. And we don't want that. So with that second rectangle node selected, it shows the keyframes up there again. Now put your playhead at 10 frames. And go back up here and open the keyframe. Like I say, with some of you, if you highlight these, only them two will show up there. Unless there's a setting I'm, I'm not familiar with, but this is how I've been doing it. Um, hover over top of that node. That's rectangle two slash one slash one. That's this one. And transform. Is the one with three ones in it. Right there. Make sure they're both highlighted. So they both move over. Same thing with the uh, rectangle. Now 
and then uncheck the little arrows so they're closed. Close the keyframes. See, now I get the third box coming open. Which is exactly, it's working exactly how we want it to. Okay, select all these center nodes, leave the merge three out. Copy it. Paste it below the other one. Bring your media in down to the bottom transform. Okay, obviously now we're looking at this coordinates, bottom left, which is 0.25 by 0.25 if I'm not mistaken. Right there. So select your transform, go up and pivot. You want the X and the Y at 0.25. Same thing with the top rectangle. Under center, put the X and the Y at 0.25. Now if you look with that bottom rectangle selected, Sorry, the top one. Now your green box is the bottom left corner. Now we'll select the bottom rectangle. We're going to animate it. We want to start that in the top right. Which is 0.75 by 0.75. Take your playhead back to 10. And go up in the inspector and change the center value X and Y to both 0.75. Now you'll see the little box move to the top right. Now move your playhead to uh, frame 30. Now we want this value again. Which is 25 and 25. Now 
Now you'll see the box move down to the left corner. But in order to see anything, we got to connect this merge 3 to the bottom merge. And then drag that merge up into the window. Now we're going to have the same problem with two of them being the same size. The two bottom ones. So select that second node on the bottom. You want to move your playhead to 15, five frames farther. Go up here, open the keyframes again. Going to highlight those two nodes. My top one is rectangles two and three ones. That's the one I got to find. That's that one. And the transform is four ones. Right there. Now we'll highlight them and drag it to the right to the time uh, playhead. And we'll be sure to close them. And then close the keyframe editor. Now let's see what we have going on. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. Go to your bottom quadrant and take merge four and connect it to media out. And before I forget, we want to put a pipe router or router or however they pronounce it in the media one. So hold alt on your keyboard. And click right there. And move the media out away from it, or media in away from it. Now let's go up to the edit page. Go up here to playback, render cache, and put it on smart mode. Let's play it a couple times, see how it works. And 
resolver has something going on. You can sometimes see where the lines are. They're very faint, but we'll go ahead and correct that right now. And we're also going to do some uh, work in the spline while we're down in, back down in Fusion. So select your bottom mat control. Over here to threshold. Grab the right side and bring it all the way down. And do that with all four. That'll close them gaps up if you're having them. Double check and make sure I got them all. Being I had to move everything around. Okay. I'm going to minimize my... Uh, nodes a little bit here. Now select everything except the media in and media out. And go up here to the right, the spline. You want to select every one of these. Once we know we have them all selected. Go over here to the right to zoom to fit. And all the keyframes should show up. Now you can do this using your keyboard shortcuts. I don't remember what they are because I can't use them. So I can use some, but not for this. So I use the smoothing icon just to the right of my... Uh, Coarser. So highlight everything in the uh, spline area. And go over here and hit smooth. Now... If you click on the spline pad there, and then hit the T on the keyboard, this little thing here will pop up. And it's randomly. Sometimes it's lower at like 33, 34. If yours is, lock that. And run it up to 50. We want 50. Mine just happened to work out where it's right on the money. Then go ahead and close your spline.
Now let's make a macro. Select everything except the media in and media out. Make sure you get the pipe router in there. Right click on any node, up to macro, create macro. Come right here where it says macro tool one, give it a name. Go up to file, down to save as group, it always wants you to save it in the macro file, but we don't want that. We want to back up one, so click on fusion, I'm on Windows, I think Mac is pretty much the same, but I'm not sure. Go down to templates and edits, then effects. That's where we want to put it. You can make a file, put it in its own file, or just put it right there and it'll be mixed in with all resolve stuff. There's the one I did already. I'm just going to hit save and it'll override it. You won't have that. Close the macro. Go back up in the edit page. Grab a different picture and bring it down to the timeline. Or it can be the same one as well, I suppose. I go to effects, scroll down till you find your quad reveal or whatever you, however you named it. Drag it over and drop it right on. If you look in the inspector, there isn't anything under the effects that you can do other than delete it. If you want to take it back out, just hit that trash can. I'm going to force this to render the cache, so I right click on it. Go to render cache fusion effect filter. To the right, whatever you named it will pop up. Now, as you can see, it rendered it. Looks good. While I'm up here, I'll show you what we could do with this. Just bear with me for a few minutes here while I do the setup. You can stack as many high as you want. Stagger them two seconds apiece and have a revealed slideshow as demonstrated here. 
Don't forget, you can also do videos with this effect as well. If you don't already know, if you hold the shift key down and hit left or right arrow, it'll move one second. You do have to drop the effect on each one of the pictures separately. And force render the cache. They don't seem to render on their own. Sorry about the tone of my voice here today. I got a little bit of a cold going on. We'll play it one more time. It'll be in full view. Well, there you go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.